Laura Montgomery won an Emmy Award for What We Do in the Shadows and now has her second nomination this year for the same show. Other projects have included The Smart Woman Survival Guide, Servitude, The Barons, and Spiral. Uh, Laura, congratulations for your, on your nomination here. I guess for, for season four, uh, the characters obviously have their established looks, right? And I guess how did you approach like growing or expanding the costume choices while also remaining true to the show that people know and like love? Yeah, definitely. Um, especially because they're vampires too. So the show started with the movie and the conceit for the movie and for the show is that vampires get stuck in the era in which they were human, which I think humans do. They kind of can tend to get stuck in the era where they feel the most um, confident, powerful. And so for our vampires, it's when they were turned into being vampires. So that's how we get uh, a pair of vampires, Nadia and Lazo, who dress in a Victorian style, Mandor, who dresses in a uh, style from the Persian region in the 1400s, Colin Robinson, who's our energy vampire, who dresses, we found out how old he is finally. Um, so he dresses in kind of a 1930s American style. And so for that reason, especially, you know, the characters are established. I never want to stray too far from their style, their silhouettes. I want to make sure that the audience can identify with who they are, um, whether it's, you know, a sleeve, like nobody else on this show is going to wear a puff sleeve. That's Nadia's territory. Um, but luckily in season four, it was motivated in the script. So if the script dictates that the characters go on a journey or have a different experience, then we can break out of the box a little bit with the costumes. So the biggest gift for me in season four was Nadia opening a nightclub. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> because that opened the door for us to have an entirely new closet for her and also for the guide who was her kind of wing woman in that environment. And it was the type of costumes that we haven't seen her wearing before. It was a vampire club where we got to, you know, stick with her classic silhouettes, but really push the envelope and try something different. So whenever that happens, that's when we get the opportunity to, to do things that are a little bit different for the characters. What was for you, I guess, vampire club wear? Like, how did, did you have an immediate idea of what that would be? Or like, how did you come up with what that would look like? It's, there are a lot of references. I think most vampire movies have a vampire nightclub scene. I guess vampires really like to go clubbing. It's dark, <laughs> so, right? So that helps. Yeah. Nightlife, yeah. The blood sprinklers and blade. I think the blade blood sprinklers were something that has come up every season that they've been wanting to do. And finally, they could do it. So it was the idea of, I think vampires are also very highly sexualized. So it was the idea of uh, nightclub, shine, um, form-fitting clothing, sex appeal. And then in terms of a style pinpoint, um, I was really inspired by 90s club wear. I was a teenager in that era and I was stuck in Toronto and kind of viewing it from afar and really thinking how exciting it must have been. And I loved all of the creativity and the clothes that the 90s club kids would wear. So I was able to pull a lot of influence from um, from the 90s club kids and yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a great, great era to be alive, right? The 90s and 90s club kids. Uh, another episode I was in, I wrote down was obviously The Wedding. And uh, I guess like when you got that script, what were your initial thoughts and like kind of how did you think about approaching that? Well, when the script landed, I don't want to say it was panic. <laughs> we always knew that a wedding was coming. So I did have that in the back of my mind. Um, and as Sharon mentioned with this uh, television show, we block shoot. So we shoot two episodes at a time and the episode for the wedding, it came a little bit late. So we were already, I would say like, I just felt like we were past our eyeballs in what we were currently shooting, which was the night market episode, which was one of our heaviest um, cast and day player episodes. We had a lot of day players and they were all, supernatural you know there was nobody who you could just pull off the rack it was valkyries dressed as abba warlock creatures goblins and so a lot of yeah, 
high background count who all needed to be dressed in a supernatural night market way. So we were all feeling quite tapped out from the night market. And with 10 days to prep for the wedding, we get this wedding script. And so the wedding was one thing. It was, okay, great, we're going to do a wedding. But within the first 10 pages, there was a makeover montage, which was very costume heavy. Uh, it was a lot of, you know, I'm really lucky that the writers and the showrunners write a lot of costume comedy bits. So it's, there's a lot for us to do always. But the costume makeover montage had the person getting a makeover is a character who wears a lot of prosthetics. It's Doug Jones as the Baron. He has a very unusual body. He has no legs. He's a charred torso with one arm fused to his body. Uh, and they had written things, you know, a mini sailor suit. He is in the basket of a bicycle and Nadia is riding the bicycle. So it was just reading it. I was like, build, 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 plus the wedding, build, 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 build. Um, we have 10 days, so it was really a matter of triaging. We got the script. We kind of had a quick meeting. I went straight upstairs to our producers, and I was like, hey, this script is amazing. Uh, it's very funny. I'm really excited. We've got a lot of work to do, and we will need to start uh, a second assistant costume designer, another buyer. All of these people need to start right this instant. Um, and then meeting with the cutter and the team about, okay, what patterns do we have that we could repurpose for some of these montage bits so we're not making Nadia 10 new costumes? Maybe we are trying to reuse some pattern blocks that we already have that we know work for her. Not that we ever want to cut corners, but knowing that Nandor needed, um, he was a groomzilla. So he needed a very embellished and ostentatious wedding costume. So we put a lot of resources into hand beating his costume, uh, like a mantle piece for him. And so then it was, where can we, you know, that means maybe the Baron has to have some hot fix crystals because we don't have time to hand beat for him. Um, so it was really a matter of kind of coming up with the ideas very quickly, just kind of putting my head down, trying to sketch out as many creative ideas as I could. What's something, what's a new shape that Nandor has never worn before that so will feel special for his wedding. And then just the triage of, how do we do this in 10 days with the small team that we have? And the team pulled it off. They're incredible. Yeah, I was going to say, like, obviously it worked really well. So it's incredible to hear you say, I guess, like, when you get through that, are you like, oh, yeah, hell yeah, this was great. Like, is that, like, I guess, it, or even more, you obviously, like I said, you won an Emmy last season. This is, you're, we're into the fifth season now. Is that still, like, would you say that that episode or that is, like, a high point for you on the show to having actually pulled that off so successfully? I think definitely. And it wasn't until the end of the season when we were packing up that we came up for air and my incredible cutter, Carla Mangiardi, was cataloging the patterns. And as an exercise, they made a count of how many costumes we had built. And we were all, we kind of marveled. I don't remember. It was in the hundreds. And we all marveled at how this team of one cutter and three sewers was able to pump out hundreds of original costumes. <laughs> Uh, and all of, you know, hundreds of original designs. And that was, you know, finally in our wrap, we thought, okay, let's pat ourselves on the back because this was amazing, guys. Yeah, it's really re remarkable. And you might have already mentioned, I guess, but I was thinking too, like, I guess, like, it, beyond this, what we're talking about, I guess, is there like a challenge to like, having it be a mockumentary show, let's say, or like, how did, like, is there something that for costumes for, for that? specific format that is like maybe people don't even realize would be a challenge I guess that is definitely so there's a huge benefit to the show and there is a challenge the benefit is that it although it's a period show it's not a period show because it's a mockumentary it's set in 2023 it's a contemporary show so although I can dress the characters in period clothing I'm not stuck in any specific, um, I don't have to adhere to the rigors of the period. I don't have to put Nadia in a corset. I can play around a little bit because maybe she picked up an 80s Versace piece and she's still wearing it. So there is a lot of freedom to that. One of the challenges I would say and where I had to learn to push myself with color and shine is that uh, the lighting is very different because we shoot it as a mockumentary style. We have to pretend that the documentary team are using um, what would be the existing lighting in the space. 
which in their mansion in particular is a lot of candlelight. And there are a lot of opportunities, I think, when the DP would love to do a beautiful lighting setup, but then they have to rein themselves in because they have to say, no, like this is a found, you know, they're just walking into the location as it is. And they haven't put up a big lighting grid in this mansion because it's a documentary. So what I found is that everything was looting quite dark. Um, so I just had to learn to kind of push the colors a bit more. A green that looks like a pale peacock in person is going to read as almost black once it gets onto the screen. So just learning how to shift the palette so that when it appears on people's screens, we can see the texture, we can see the color, we can see some shine. Um, so that was the challenge, I think, with, the, with that format. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we have to wrap it here, but Laura Montgomery, it's been great hearing you chat about uh, what we do in the shadows, an Emmy nominee this year, and obviously a winner. Uh, last year, congratulations, and thank you so much. Thank you.